clarify something about the Michael Burke um, exam. They made somebody, it said, I believe, said to Missouri Stop Human Trafficking Coalition and the doctors at Green Meadows ultimately called Dr. Perks and pressured him into not keeping that exam appointment so that I would get a true second opinion contrary to that of the universities. Um, there's no other OBGYNs in town. They're all either University of Missouri, the Boone has one group, Women's Health Associates, where um, Dr. Wilson got recorded falsifying her medical records. And they're all saying that they won't treat me because they can't. They're, they're saying it's for my safety. If we do your surgery within that 45 minutes, if Dr. Wilson goes on call, she might go in there and hurt you. Um, the RN at, at United States didn't believe that. They're like, that's, that's bullshit. They can absolutely make sure she doesn't come anywhere near you. She can recuse herself. So it's all retaliation. They're cutting off my resources for medical care, hoping that I will leave town um, permanently. I, my, my rent and utility, this is a huge two-bedroom apartment. I haven't been able to do anything with it. It's gorgeous. I love my neighbors. Um, I haven't been able to do anything with it because I've just basically been too crippled. I'm able to sit up and give these statements because I still have... You know, almost half of the the pain pill. They gave me 20 pain pills on uh, January the 4th when I was back in the ER rupturing. Um, so Michael Burke canceled that appointment. Um, after the ablation, that was September... 16th, September 29th, I recorded Dr. Clark in there. Oh, why, Mr. Mo Lovett on YouTube. A few weeks later, I start bleeding again, and it's pretty bad. And I send Katie a, a text message on, like, November 1st, something like that. Um, I bled for 18 days. One night, I had really bad, sharp pelvic pain. I gush all the way to the bathroom, blood, and then I get in the bathroom, and I took pictures, and it, it was bad. It was just absolutely horrific. I'm terrified. I send her an email in the middle of the night. She's like, we got to get you to the hospital, and I was like, I don't want to deal with these bastards. You don't know how bad it's been, Katie. They'll just give me pain pills if I'm lucky and send me home. They'll falsify the radical records and send me home. And that's, I believe that's what I actually put in the email. Which was September. Actually, it was November 17th, but it was the middle of the night. So, the next day, she takes me to Boone. I look so bad. With the pain, I had no voice. The, the infection was so systemic at that point. I look so bad, I was barely able to sit up in that chair and let that let lady do the triage. She immediately starts an IV and immediately draws blood. She says, if this blood work comes back bad, I'm getting you back there really fast. Because you could see the whole waiting room was full of people. Um, I guess they only had one provider. It was Dr. Judy on that night. Um, we sit out there for three hours. Me being autistic, I love to eat. <laughs> Even though it made me sick, I love to eat. Her, her boyfriend calls or she calls him or something. And I said, have him bring a pizza and some Coke. We'd already been sitting there two hours. I was just kidding. He does it. And I was like, well, you got an angel there. You may hang on to him. And I said, I was just kidding. But he just, okay. And he, you know, he brings pizza and some soda. And uh, it was it was nice to hang out with those kids. It was you know, I'm sitting there, I know I'm in really bad shape, and the nurse knew I was in really bad shape, and um, I get back to the back, the doctor comes in, and I had already went over with John, a friend of mine who's a pathologist, he said, give him this list of symptoms and make sure you tell him everything, 
everything that you've told me. I said he said you you've got a rupture, you're an underlying, you've got septicemia going on. Sepsis. And I showed those texts to Katie prior to me even getting to the back. Get to the back. I go over the list of symptoms. I said I coughed, I started bleeding. That was 18 days ago. Last night I started exploding blood and clots. And I've done it again. And I'm terrified. This is this pain is. I mean, you can look at me and I, oh my God, it was like I was half dead. My neighbors had been begging me to go to the ER. They need to admit you. They need to admit you. You need to be in the hospital. You need to be in the hospital. This is what I heard from them for almost a year. Katie absolutely thought I needed to be in the hospital. And she was really hopeful after I went through the list of symptoms. He says, this is ruptured. Or you have a tear in the scar tissue, but I think he was leaning on rupture because a tear in the scar tissue from the ablation wouldn't create that much blood. Only the tumor would would have that much blood. I mean, I, it's not like I could have a period. I didn't have an endometrium lining anymore. Um, he says, I want to get a cat scan. He, start, he had me lay back and he started feeling around and I was really tender in the flank and up underneath the rib cage. And it felt like there was a stabbing pain up underneath right behind my left breast and he's like uh your liver and kidneys aren't something's going on here we're going to order cat scan too and i'm going to get a an ultrasound why aren't you seeing this doctor where what, what doctor where do you find him? when he started asking me my medical history after he got a list of symptoms he'd already blurted out the truth um goes they, they do come and do the cat scan which everyone knows is notoriously unreliable. Oh, I don't see any blood in the pelvic floor, which it wouldn't necessarily pick it up anyway. Um, I'm not going to do the ultrasound. I said, you're going to send me home, exploding blood and clots with all this racking chills and fever and all this pain I can barely move. And I don't remember what excuses he made. The audio recording had already stopped because Katie said, your battery just went dead. So it didn't capture him coming in there, not telling me what was really on that CAT scan about how the tumor had grown to six centimeters. Um, and uh, there was something else about that too. That said the liver and kidneys are good, but he told me my blood work was good. The blood work wasn't good. It had several indicators on there indicating sepsis. None of them were, you know, critically high, but every single one of them certainly indicated an underlying, and I'm, I'm, you know, racking chills. Um, my heart rate was 112. Um, decides he's not going to do the ultrasound, tells me my blood work is good. When the, the Katie says, can you please at least give her some tramadol for the pain so she can sleep? Well, okay, I'll do that. Then when the nurse comes in to discharge me, she says, I put your blood work in here. You need to make sure you show that to the next doctor you see. It, I was kind of delirious with the fever and the pain. And I said, well, that's unusual. You guys don't usually give us our blood work with our discharge papers. I said, can I have my radiology report too she says know that you gotta wait for it and then she shot out before i could ask her any more questions she handed me the paperwork the prescription and left i said that's unusual katie though it didn't occur to me to look at it i said john's gonna have a fit i said katie didn't i tell you they were just gonna write for narcotics and they're gonna falsify the medical records and they're sending me home sick as a dog we didn't think to look at that blood work to see that it was was bad and that that's why the nurse slipped it to me um i get home i'm gonna stop here and then i'll go into uh, my conversation with john